Game Dev, Dev Journey. Hey everyone, it's Rob here from Game Dev Journey. Welcome to the first episode in my Godot answer series, in which I answer common questions asked by new game devs. If you enjoy the video, please tap that like button and consider subscribing to help me make more videos like this one. Today's question is, how can I implement 8-directional movement to my 2D character in Godot? Most player characters in Godot consist of a kinematic body 2D node, a sprite or animated sprite node, and a collision shape 2D node. Kinematic bodies are chosen for characters in games because there are special types of bodies that are meant to be user controlled. This is exactly what you want when implementing the player character in your game, as you want the user or the player to control their character with an input device such as a controller, a keyboard or a mouse. Kinematic bodies are not affected by physics, which means they are independent of the physics engine, which is simulating the effect of physical forces on other bodies in your game. Also, kinematic bodies have their own pre-built behaviors or methods for movement. In Godot, we have move and slide and move and collide. We can use these methods to move the player without having to reposition him on the screen continuously. The sprite node is there to display a texture, which is usually this image that we want to use for our character. If our character has multiple frames to switch between for animations, then we would use an animated sprite node. Finally, our collision shape 2D is essentially the player's hitbox or hurt box and will be used to detect when one object collides or intersects with another. To make our character move, we attach a script to our kinematic body player node and we program it to move the way we want it to in response to input. In this case, we'll accept input from the keyboard. Now Godot has an input map which associates input such as a key press, a mouse click or a controller button press with an action command. We can decide what the name of the action command is and which input is associated with it by editing the input map as follows. Now we can create our own function to get the relevant input and make the player character react in the correct way. If the action pressed was the one linked to our action command called right, then we increase the player's velocity in the x direction by 1. If they want to move left, then we set their direction of motion in the opposite direction. So we invert their direction by adding negative 1 in the x direction. Strangely, we add 1 when going down and subtract 1 when going up. This is because historically, computers used cathode ray tubes which drew the image with a cathode ray from the upper left corner to the lower right, moving left to right and up and then down. Now we have two variables at the top of our program which are global variables. This means that any method or function within the script can access these variables and their data. The first variable is an integer variable, which means it can only accept whole numbers and it's exported to the Godot editor so that we can change its value in the inspector to see how it affects the movement live while the game is playing. We're using this variable to represent the player's speed. The second variable is used to represent the player's velocity. Now this generally refers to the speed of something in a given direction. The x directions are left and right, which correspond to negative one and positive one. The y directions are up and down, and they correspond to negative one and positive one for the historical reasons discussed earlier. Then we have our getInput method or function, which has its own local vector variable, which is accessible only within this function. Depending on the action being pressed, we increase the velocity of our character in the corresponding direction. Of course, if the player pressed two keys at once to move along a diagonal, the player's velocity will be doubled, since they will get plus one in the x direction and plus one in the y direction. If we want to be sure that the player moves at the same speed in all directions, 
then we can normalize their velocity. This is a mathematical way of ensuring the velocity is the same in all directions. Effectively, you're reducing the velocity to one, but keeping the direction the same. Now, we multiply our velocity by our speed, which is easily adjustable. Every game is essentially a loop running until some end condition stops it. This loop is called the game loop. And within it, all sorts of things have to happen. Every single cycle of the game loop is called a frame, and most games run at 60 frames per second. At its most essential in a traditional game loop, inputs are processed, objects in the game world are updated and redrawn, and outputs are generated. In Godot, the main game loop is called the process function. Note how the process function begins with an underscore. All of the functions which come pre-built or, or pre-programmed with Godot will begin with the underscore. In our process function, we'll call or run our getInput function so that we can continually check and respond to input from the user. We'll then set the velocity of the player via the move and slide function, which comes with kinematic body, and that will make the player move. If we want our player sprite to face in the direction that they're moving, then we simply rotate the image suitably. So facing right would be 90 degrees, left would be minus 90, down would be minus 180, and up would be zero. When the user pressed two keys to move along a diagonal, we can set the rotation to 45 degree increments. That's all for this week. Please leave any questions you would like answered in the comments and I hope to see you all again next time.